As the regular season comes to a close, we're looking toward the playoffs, but we need your help. Palm Beach County Friday Night Football is seeking sponsors for postseason action, including the 14th annual All-Star Game on December 15th. Follow your team's road to the state finals on palmbeachpost.com with all the coverage you've come to know from Palm Beach County Friday Night Football. To find out how you can be a sponsor, email us at pbcfnf at aol.com. That's pbcfnf at aol.com. Let's keep the season going. Palm Beach County Friday Night Football is brought to you by the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office, the Miami Dolphins, Urban Youth Impact, and William Ward. Special thanks to Terrence Freeman, attorney at law, and Gator Leasing. And now, back to the game. We're back at Park Vista High School where the homestanding Cobras own a 10-point lead, 17-7 over Lake Worth. Star Jackson out of the shotgun. He's going to go deep again, and he's got a man, and this time he connects. He's been trying to connect all game, but now he's got a man and a big game for Lake Worth. That is Willie Hall down to the 27-yard line. What happened there, Dan, was they had two receivers to that side of the field, and the outside receiver ran a dig route to the inside, and the inside receiver, Hall, broke off the outside receiver's backside, and actually a little pick play out there, and uh, Star found him, but notice how much easier it was to throw the ball. A lot easier with the wind at your back. And now first and 10. And he's going deep again, and he's got a man again and a catch. And it's going to be a touchdown for Lake Worth. Wow, incredible. That looks like it was uh, Pierre, Brad Pierre, on the touchdown reception, number 18. Number 18 goes up and gets the ball against double coverage. Brad Pierre, senior, 6'2", 195. And what a terrific catch and run after the throw. And it's like somebody flicked on a light switch. All of a sudden, Lake Worth is in business and about to be only down by three points if the uh, conversion here by Joshua Robles is true. Snap, kick, up, good. And we've got a three-point game here right at the beginning of the fourth quarter, 17-14 Park Vista. And we're gonna have some nervous coaches on the sidelines here. But I'm, I'm having a great time. This is a heck of a game. Okay, here's the, the throw by Jackson. Really isn't a double coverage, but he's got the 6'2 kid, goes up in the air, nice catch, plants his foot and gets vertical. Nice block by Willie Hall there, not yep. giving up at the play. And boom, just like that, 17-14. And uh, Marquise McNeil with a nice block there too. And I'm hearing my producer in my ear, but I don't think he needs to be talking in my ear. So I'm just, I'm letting him know the only way I can. Oh, uh, we're gonna go down now to uh, Kimberly Peterson. Kimberly. Cheerleader coach, Dana, Jenna Dares. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good, what did the girls do earlier today for the, for the football players? Well, they were so excited this morning. They all brought in a Gatorade for each player and they decided to decorate the locker room and the boys loved it. I think it got them a little pumped up for the game tonight. Okay, and this is a really intense game. You, you were talking to me earlier about how many seniors were graduating. I was, there's 36 seniors graduating this year. Wow. So it's even more special tonight for us. Okay, so this is an, okay, this is an intense game for everyone from the chillers down to the football players. Thanks, Dan. Back to you. Thank you, Kimberly. And we had the kickoff during that interview. And the flag. Flag was for the ball going out of bounds. And so it'll be placed upfield here at the 35-yard line. First and 10 for Park Vista. And nice field position for Park Vista. A kicking error, I would I would uh, gather, for Lake Worth. So you want to pin him back here as far as you can. Although, you don't want to give Selicourt uh, or uh, or number 21 the ball to return there. Yeah, we've seen a lot of that this year. Yeah. We've seen a lot of pooch kicks. All right, so first and 10. The give is going to be up the middle. Looks like Joe Looney lost his helmet again. Joe's either going to have to get a haircut or he's going to have to get a smaller helmet. He's having a hard time because I, on. It appears to be funny, but I, I really get 
nervous when sure. players use their helmet because let's face it that's the only protection they have out there sure all right that was Norpus on the carry a gain of two so second and nine for Park Vista holding a slim three-point lead here over Lake Worth 1050 to go in the game in the shotgun Eddie Sullivan three receivers wide he's gonna keep it and not gonna get very far on that play. It looked promising at first, but he was chased down very quickly. Nice pursuit by the Lake Worth defense there. Right, and they make some good changes at halftime, and they've got the safety, Dan, run into the alley to take the quarterback, and they've got the corner tick going on the pitch, and they just feel like they can run down Sullivan, which they did there in the open field. Number four, Javon Jackson among those who were in on that play. Third down and seven. And let's see if Sullivan can get anything going in the air. He's gonna try. He's throwing over the middle. He's got a man and a great catch by the tight end, number 85. Oh no, now they're saying incomplete. Oh, I thought he came down with it. Well, I think what happened, Dan, he had the ball and when he hit the ground, his elbow dislodged the ball. It, it's what we call four vertical routes and the tight end releases into that hole, which is 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 a place that the ball goes. Here's the catch. And I think, oh, no, yeah. he oh, lost yeah. possession before right. he even got to the ground. That's number 85, Matt Welsh, senior, who is uh, a favorite target of Sullivan at times. The punt returner is way too deep, Dan. So now on the punt is up Dam. Oh, and they're gonna let it go. Oh no, he's gonna pick it up. Not a good idea, but he's gaining some yards on it. And is gonna be pulled down at the 40 yard line. That was Winfield Vincent on the return and a very dangerous move there. Is that one of those where you go, no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay yeah. <laughs> no, that was extremely dangerous and not and not very smart, to be honest with you. But now, Lake Worth has the ball, 40-yard line with the win. First and 10, and they scored very quickly on their last possession. Let's see if uh, Star Jackson is going to be content to keep airing the ball out here. Had great success on that last drive, a very fast drive that got Lake Worth now to within three. 940 going to go in the game. Sorry, Bill. Tri that's all right. Trips coming to this side, one back in the backfield, passing formation. He's going deep again, and he's got a man, and he's got a great catch at the 20 yard line. That was an incredible catch. That was the sophomore we've been talking about all game, I believe, Marquise McNeil. I'll tell you what, what a difference the wind makes. Oh, because my that goodness. ball was just led perfectly, and, and it was a good catch. Don't kid okay, yourself. Okay, I was wrong. But I watch the throw, Dan. That's the throw is right there. Perfect extension with the arm and a tight spiral up in the wind. The ball you're going to see is going to come down right in his hands. And that's I mean, Brad Pierre who made He'd have catch. a hard time dropping that one. Wow. Another big play for Lake Worth here. And the ball now inside the 20 yard line, first and 10, three wide receivers. They're gonna give it to Watson around the left side and Watson is gonna bull ahead for about five or six yards. I really like the way Watson runs the football. When he sees there's no daylight, he gives it a little Walter Payton move. And instead of taking the punishment, he tries to deliver it. I, I, I've really been impressed with him all year. I've seen a lot of film on it. And also on that left side, he is getting some room. So you're gonna have to credit the offensive line there a little bit too on the left side. Of course, Joe Looney, the left tackle on the left side, he should get some room over Abs there. Absolutely, I'd be running right over him, obviously. All right, so second and four. They give up the middle, and that's to Perry. Perry's got a good gain, but he's gonna be just shy of the first down. Third and short. And now, the ball now inside if you wanna the gamble a little bit here, this is a great time for play action, and uh, maybe a roll out or a bootleg, hide the ball, uh, get it to the inside receiver. I think they're gonna run the ball based on formation, but just we'll have to see. All right, he's got three wide receivers. McNeil in motion, and we had some movement. I think he's got an encroachment by Park Vista. I think you're going to get offside. Yeah, the Lake Worth linemen are applauding. 
Not usually a good sign for the defense. It might be a good time, Dan, to remind everybody that in high school, you can't go into the neutral zone. It's an automatic penalty in college and, and the pros, you can do that can as long back. as you don't make contact. But in high school, not, not happening. And not a lot of flags called on Park Vista this game, but that was a bad time for that one. It's going to bring up a first and goal from the five. The give to the left side to Perry. Perry, though, is going to be stopped short. Good defensive effort there by a couple of Cobras, including uh, number eight, win uh, or rather, Johnny Selicourt. Yeah, they get in the, wing, the full T formation and just run power off the left side right over uh, Joe Looney. That's the first mistake I've seen Watson make tonight when he bounced outside there. I really felt like he should have turned it up and got his one or two yards. Jake Owen on the tackle as well. That's two of the better player there's involved in that. So second down now. The give again up the middle. They're struggling, but not much there. Maybe a yard, maybe two. And that was Sherrod on the carry. Sherrod runs the trap player, the break back uh, to the fullback. I'm sure they were expecting uh, Watson to get the ball, but they ran the little kind of a misdirection play to the fullback. But now they're looking at fourth and four. I think it's third uh, still. Excuse me, I'm sorry, third and four. And I think you keep the ball in Star Jackson's hands here. Well, you would think so. He's got three men in the backfield. He's going to fake. He's looking for a man. He's got one and touchdown, Lake Worth. That was Roosevelt Watson on the touchdown for the Trojans. Well, you had to believe they had a play action pass out of that full T formation. And what they ran was the tight end did a little corner route and cleared the zone for Watson to come out of the backfield and get in the flat. Uh, very well executed play, and Lake Worth, all of a sudden, just like that, has the lead. Well, Jackson throwing with the wind looks like, you know, Bart Starr, Joe Montana. <laughs> Against the wind, he didn't look like that, and I'll tell you what, when he's throwing the ball like this, it, you can be defending and still not be able to stop him. Yeah, I think uh, Alabama fans watching this game are, are going to be looking forward to having that young man join the team. Well, I think he's going to be a star at the collegiate level. I, with the coaching he's going to get and the, the, the time spent and the receivers he's going to have, and it, he's going to be a good player. All right, so the point after attempt by Joshua Robles is up, and it's good. And that's a huge point, Dan. And that's a four-point lead, 21-17 with 7-10 to go in the game. And uh, has, to be, uh, has to be stressed. Park Vista has got to go into the wind here for the rest of this game to try to come back and win. Okay, here's, here's the little rollout. You can see number three, Watson, get out in the flat. And Jackson throws the ball on the run just as well as he does setting his feet. He hits Watson. There's no way they're going to tackle him anyway, and he's already – in the end zone, yep. so easy six. Selicourt was uh, defending on the play, but obviously didn't get over there fast enough. 7-10 to go in the game, 21-17. Lake Worth with the lead. Now we've seen uh, Selicourt with a big run tonight, 60 yards for a touchdown, and they're gonna need to get that against the wind if they're gonna come back in this game. Only down by four, but this is really gut check time for Brian Dodd's team. Uh, Dan, if you notice, there must have been a post uh, penalty after the play because Lake Worth's lining up to kick the ball on the 45-yard line. And now if you're Lake Worth, I would think you would try to keep this on the ground and not get it to go in the end zone. Well, I always felt that you should onside kick this every time because you're not going to lose anything. Right. Uh, let's see if we, what strategy Eric Lowe uh, has here. 